Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and today welcome back to another detailed forecast update for November 27th, 2024. Got a lot to get through today, including some moderate to heavy rainfall expected across the northwestern slopes of New South Wales and then into the northeast of the state and into southeastern Queensland. Some heavy rainfall also expected across Victoria. We'll talk about some heavy rainfall expected up in the far north of Queensland as well. Showers and thunderstorms, possibly severe ones over the Northern Territory and parts of WA and to round things off, we'll talk about a developing tropical low offshore from Western Australia that is threatening to become the season's first tropical cyclone. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things with New South Wales and Victoria. I'm not going to pan away from this image here because we do have a radar loop over the last six hours, which is quite rare for this channel. We never managed to get this stuff staying around for long, just considering how slow the bandwidth is here. But you can see that there has been a substantial amount of moderate and at times heavy rainfall streaming in across inland parts of New South Wales, impacting communities from the border with Queensland. In fact, probably a little bit further north up towards Windora, extending down towards Coba through Burke and then uh, down towards Griffith and Wagga Wagga and some heavy falls have also been reported into Victoria where the actual heaviest rainfall has been with Mount Buller picking up around 50 millimetres and a couple of adjacent communities picking up between 50 and 60 millimetres of rainfall as well overnight. Some good falls also into the southern part of Victoria as well around Melbourne. Uh, I believe they've picked up about 20 millimetres of much needed rainfall as well and you can see the extra tropical cyclone powering this system. In fact we're going to zoom in and get a better look at this system here really wrapping itself up as it makes its crossing over Kangaroo Island, bringing a couple of showers into the south, uh, southern parts of South Australia, but nothing too serious. Same deal with Tasmania, bit of rainfall there, but nothing too serious. So let's jump to the forecast now and take a look at what is expected over the next three days. Now the rainfall here is going to drop off over the coming couple of hours, but behind it in its wake, especially for the southwestern corner of Queensland, we're going to see some significant thunderstorms far up tonight, especially around Birdsville and Windora. We'll be seeing a couple of gnarly thunderstorms blob tonight, the chance of them being severe as well. Uh, the severe storms will be very hit and miss. There's only going to be a few cells here and there. There will be a couple more pulse thunderstorms, especially as you head further north up towards Mount Isa and Julia Creek. There'll be a couple of good storms up there. But in the southwestern corner of Queensland, the northwestern corner of New South Wales, there is going to be the chance of thunderstorms bringing some heavy rainfall and damaging winds, and maybe the chance of some medium to large size hailstones. There'll also be a line of thunderstorms moving through the interior parts of Victoria, especially around Shepparton and Mansfield. You can see them here moving through the interior parts of the state north of Melbourne. Melbourne actually unlikely to receive any significant impacts from these thunderstorms. The chance of a thunderstorm is still there for Melbourne and Geelong, especially this afternoon. But yeah, around 5 or 6 p.m. tonight, we'll likely see a line of thunderstorms develop across interior parts of Victoria. And apart from that, nothing really expected across New South Wales, Victoria beyond this. You can see a couple more thunderstorms expected to fire up into Thursday morning uh, and Thursday afternoon across the central parts into the northeastern parts of New South Wales. Sydney as well, same with Wollongong, a chance of thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and evening. You can see here the chance of also severe thunderstorms across some of the plains uh, adjacent to the Blue Mountains along the New South Wales coastline, especially around Sydney and Wollongong. It's been a while since they've had a chance of severe thunderstorms on the forecast, and it does look like tomorrow that chance is going to be there. Very good conditions for thunderstorms as well. Great mid-level humidity values, uh, excellent convective available potential energy values, especially for New South Wales at this time of the year. It's looking really flash indeed for some of these thunderstorms. It's also going to be a warm day as well, so those thunderstorms will have a field day in some of those uh, conditions. Uh, chaps of thunderstorms as well out towards Lightning Ridge and we'll get also the chance of some severe ones out there tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be Friday though when this rainfall really does pipe up and it is still an interesting aspect on the forecast here. You can see thunderstorms and showers blowing up from Friday morning and I think how this is going to look here, this weather pattern it is going to be a kind of hill debility line of rainfall uh, or line of showers tending to rainfall at times especially as you get further towards the coast out towards Tamworth and Cessnock and the Barrington Tops. The rainfall there is going to be a little bit more steady but we'll likely see a light of showers develop into rainfall throughout the course of Friday morning, bringing those heavy falls into the interior parts of New South Wales. Uh, the heaviest falls will be isolated around the Tamworth, Armadale, and hopefully Glen Innes area, parched for rainfall out there. They desperately do need it. But inland from Newcastle, Tari and Forster, the heaviest falls will be in this area, but we'll also see some moderate rainfall further out inland, as I've just said. And I wouldn't be writing off rainfall accumulations on Friday or to the 9am on Saturday of being at least 50 or 60 millimetres further inland. I mean, you can already see Saturday morning some very heavy falls piping up around the Dubbo area and they, this has been steady over the last couple of days this forecast at least we'll likely see a line of moderate to heavy and at times very heavy rainfall move through the interior parts of New South Wales on Saturday morning it's going to look like kind of a play it by ear type thing and have a look at what's actually materialising on the rain radar on Saturday morning I, this forecast does look like it is a little bit complicated this time but powered by a low pressure system that's likely to sit over interior parts of Victoria and New South Wales we will likely get a very nice band of rainfall extending right 
right through New South Wales eastern half or central to eastern half and even up in towards Queensland as well which we will get to in just a few moments but yes yeah, some very good rainfall looks like it's going to come out of fruition uh, come into fruition from this event here you can see rainfall accumulations out till Sunday afternoon of at least 150 millimeters around the cooler Dubbo area Dubbo actually expecting about 100 millimeters also the majority of that falling Friday morning into the Friday afternoon to kind of time frame and then Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon it looks like there will be a couple of hours break between the two bands of rainfall coming through on Friday and Saturday like I said those heaviest falls coming through Saturday uh, Friday morning and then Saturday morning into the afternoon also some good falls expected to back itself up against the high peaks into the New South Wales high country and also into the Victorian high country I think rainfall accumulations will blow out substantially more than what they are on the forecast right now especially for Threadbow I'd be surprised if Threadbow didn't actually pick up 150 millimeters of rainfall uh, and the chance of some snow flurries as well just considering the nature of the low pressure system here on Saturday evening I'd be surprised if Threadbow didn't pick up 150 millimeters from this weather event in all it's going to be quite a wet one indeed some good falls also into the northeastern corner of New South Wales like I said we'll get in Lightning Ridge expecting between 50 and 80 millimeters graft and about 60 or 70 millimeters expected Armadale and Inverell unlikely to pick up too decent rainfall they will still likely see about 30 or 40 millimeters and same story for Glen Innes unfortunately the rainfall just doesn't look like it's going to come into fruition in just this area here which is a parched area of New South Wales and can really deal with the do with the rainfall at this time but uh, apart from that into the interior parts of New South Wales especially in the agricultural districts around Dubbo, Narrabri, uh, Cooler, Mudgee, Orange, Bathurst, Lithgow the rainfall is going to be very very good indeed and uh, they have had some good rainfall as well over the couple last couple of months so this rainfall here uh, certainly not exactly 100% needed for some of these areas but very welcome indeed and we'll just add it to the soil moisture values which is just great news as we head into the wet season you can see it here soil moisture values across the entire eastern half of New South Wales much above average by next Sunday in fact for the majority of the state the soil moisture values are well and truly above average so very very good to see I'm very happy to see this and I imagine a lot of other people will be very happy to see this on the forecast we've spent long enough talking about New South Wales Victoria and Tasmania so let's just shift focus here and talk about something a little bit more tropical and I would like to give Queensland a bit of attention now into the southeast spoiler alert there's really nothing of interest coming through over the next 10 days and I will break it down for you if that does change you can see a couple of showers expected here and there throughout the course of today and tomorrow also a couple of showers moving through on Friday into the southeastern corner there will be showers and storms or the chance of showers not storms rather on Saturday but it doesn't look like it's going to be too high that chance and we will revisit that again on Saturday but I will just pull this back to Thursday because you can see showers and thunderstorms developing in the western half of the state especially around Mount Isa they're expecting quite a decent thunderstorm outbreak of some gnarly thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and then this outbreak kind of just progressively heads further uh, towards the east as the days go on you can see uh, the storms turning to rainfall at times across the western interior parts of Queensland around Longreach and Windora or further towards the west of Longreach and Windora and then a couple of nice thunderstorms extending between Karumba and Huendon uh, through Georgetown and Forsyth and there's also the chance of some thunderstorms Friday afternoon and evening extending up the Cape York Peninsula again nothing too crazy expected here late Friday night we'll likely see an outbreak of severe thunderstorms along the Cape York Peninsula extending down towards Charters Towers and maybe even as far south as Matabara and Claremont but unlikely to impact those communities there and then we will see an onshore flow pick itself up from Friday night into early Saturday morning that's going to be driving those thunderstorms and showers here and there all throughout the far north and the central north of Queensland throughout the course of Saturday you can see an onshore flow here driving some showers and storms ashore throughout the early hours of Saturday impacting areas around Charters Towers, Townsville, Bowen and Air and you can also see those uh, storms firing up in pretty dramatic fashion on a Saturday night to round out November and then for the official start of summer we have an outbreak of thunderstorms let me tell you the community is extending north of Mackay pretty much all along the coastline within 100 kilometers of the coastline up to Thursday Island in the far north of Queensland you are expecting thunderstorms Sunday night this is a pretty intense forecast that's for sure Atherton Tablelands finally expected to see some good rainfall on Sunday it's been bounced around in the forecast for the last couple of days and a lot of people getting very excited for it especially in my comment section so this rainfall here looking very good indeed and getting a lot of people excited however it is now pretty likely to occur on Sunday and some good rainfall is expected out of that let me tell you in fact just over that 24 hour period through Sunday uh, you can see accumulations expected to be in excess of 30 or 40 millimeters over a wide swathe of northern Queensland which is great to see indeed and the rainfall from these thunderstorms here especially because they're going to be pulse thunderstorms slow moving uh, and likely to drop some very heavy rainfall at times the accumulations could blow out substantially more than what they actually are reporting on the forecast here so we will have to wait and see what actually happens on a Sunday afternoon and evening then that onshore flow pipes up you can see showers and storms adjacent to the Queensland 
Queensland coastline on Monday. Those showers continuing through Tuesday as we get a bit of a monsoon burst piping up from Tuesday through Wednesday and then those showers finally easing off Wednesday night into early Thursday morning and some good falls expected up in the far north of Queensland from uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, potentially up towards 100 millimetres over just this time frame this week and then into early next week. Again, we will revisit the forecast for uh, rainfall or tropical rainfall up in the far north of Queensland sometime next week, just considering the uh, uncertain nature of it and the fact that we do have thunderstorms that seem to be more important at this time. But you can see in terms of rainfall, very good rainfall expected over the next week or so. You can see rainfall accumulations expected to be well in excess of 100 millimetres for quite a few locations, especially into remote interior Cape York. Cairns expecting about 50 millimetres. It's a very valid forecast. Indeed, the majority of that should come through on uh, Sunday and then into Monday and Tuesday from showers, just a little bit more topping that off there. Atherton and Raven, so expecting between 30 and 70 millimetres of rainfall. I reckon it will likely be on the upper end of that, but again, if these thunderstorms do bust out on Sunday, then there will unlikely be too much rainfall across the far north of Queensland. Uh, then having a look at Cardwell and Ingham as well, some good falls expected there. Towns will likely to escape the worst of it in terms of thunderstorms. Bowen as well, likely to escape the worst of it. Charters Tower is likely to get pumped though from thunderstorms on both Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights. We could be seeing accumulations there amount to up towards 150 millimetres. Again, a very plausible forecast just considering that that is two or three very good and very wet storms, completely possible for this time of the year. The rainfall, uh, especially just immediately inland where those thunderstorms are going to fire up, is going to be quite intense indeed, especially over... Uh, Saturday and Sunday nights. And then further down the Queensland coastline and the central coast for Ogmore, Rockhampton, Glad uh, Gladstone, Agnes Water and Bundaberg, the rainfall, they're not looking too flash, but still over the next 10 days we could be seeing accumulations up towards 20 or 30 millimetres, maybe a little bit more for Bundaberg. There does look to be some good rainfall piping up along the Sunshine Coast from uh, Wednesday and Thursday onwards. We might be seeing a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak into the first uh, week of December. But again, in terms of rainfall, it's very hard to say at this point that they're going to get some good rainfall. I would love to be hopeful and optimistic mystic for the central Queensland coastline and unfortunately by Sunday where we are seeing some good storms here and there especially into the southeast of the state it doesn't look like the rainfall is going to be too flash for the central coast it's kind of the only coastline of Queensland that properly misses out in the rainfall over the next 10 days which I imagine is going to upset quite a lot of people that do desperately need that rainfall out there. All in all for Queensland, looking very wet indeed. Lots of storms to cover. In fact, I've probably missed an awful lot of them in this forecast. So please do let me know if I've left you confused or if I've missed the forecast to your location in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It is a very complicated east coast weather forecast for Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. We're not just talking about isolated thunderstorms across the southeast of Queensland. We're talking about thunderstorms across 90% of Queensland, pretty much 100% of New South Wales and 100% of Victoria as well. So it has been a very complicated and difficult forecast to put together. And then across into Vic uh, Victoria, and about as far away from Victoria as we can get right now, into the Northern Territory in Western Australia. Some thunderstorms also expected to round out the remainder of this week. We've had some good storms overnight, up to 100 millimetres has fallen outside of Adelaide River once again to amount to the 100 millimetres that they have seen on Monday night as well. So the rainfall accumulations really quickly piling on there. Great falls expected tonight as well. Some very widespread thunderstorms also expected tonight. And also into tomorrow morning as well, we could be seeing a couple of severe thunderstorms around the Wave Hill and Elliott area throughout the course of tomorrow tomorrow morning and then into tomorrow evening. Thunderstorms into Arnhem Land as well on Friday morning. It looks like we're just going to get a line of showers and storms being pretty consistent along the trough line extending through the Northern Territory and then into Queensland, attaching itself to that low pressure area that's going to develop this weekend over New South Wales. And that's just going to create a connected line of thunderstorms extending right across the eastern half of Australia and especially across the interior parts of the Northern Territory, like I said, around Elliott and Wave Hill. Those rainfall accumulations are going to pile on very, very quickly. Likely to escape the worst of the thunderstorms on Saturday night. You can see a couple of storms expected here and there around Darwin on Sunday night, but uh, in terms of rainfall, not likely to be too much. And then a return to the more tropical pattern of pulse thunderstorms in the evening through Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday into the early parts of December. So let's take a look at rainfall accumulations over the next couple of days. So the remainder of this thunderstorm outbreak, it kind of closes out on Saturday morning, but you can see rainfall accumulations just over this next three-day period, well in excess of 100 millimeters, across, millimeters in uh, interior parts of the Northern Territory outside of Tennant Creek and Elliot, and this has been very consistent over the last couple of days. Mount Isa also likely to get pumped from thunderstorms tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night as well, and you can see accumulations there well in excess of 120 millimetres. Uh, Darwin, not expecting too much rainfall over the next three days, but it's going to be the accumulations from Saturday onwards that really do pile on up there, and from the week from Saturday uh, right through the first week of December, you can see accumulations there expected to be in excess of 100 millimetres from just thunderstorms. Very typical, very stock standard weather for this time of the year, but still some substantial accumulations 
there and the rainfall really beginning to pipe up now for locations across the Northern Territory. In fact, since the official start of the wet season, some places have seen over 300 millimetres of rainfall. And of course, it is the wet season, like I've said about a million times in the last minute. But again, that is a substantial amount of rainfall and the risk of flooding is now starting to build. In terms of interesting stuff over in the west, nothing crazy to report on. You can see in terms of rainfall, there's nothing really uh, here. It's going to get quite warm, however, to round out this week. In fact, especially into the southwest, with the west coast trough expected to develop around, you guessed it, the west coast. Perth expecting top of 38 on Friday. It's going to get quite warm indeed. It's actually a little bit cooler on this forecast model here, but other forecast models suggesting a much warmer top, and then temperatures into the early 40s expected to wrap itself up around the northern parts of the wheat belt, and then into the Gascoigne region and the Murchison region as well. But apart from that, nothing crazy and nothing worth really talking about or diving into too much information here and that hot weather is going to synchronize itself up with the tropical cyclone developing offshore from western australia now the bureau of meteorology have knocked this cyclone's chances uh completely down in fact they've only given it a 25 percent chance of formation uh in today's forecast as opposed to the 40 percent that they're giving it in yesterday's forecast but let's take a look at the satellite picture right now and have a look at what we actually expect for this system here now you can see the system's already starting to show signs of rotation it's also blowing up a decent amount of of convection at this time. Plenty of thunderstorms around the centre of this system. Uh, it isn't organised yet, definitely not convectively speaking. The uh, storms are really struggling to organise themselves properly and the winds over on the West Island, the Cocos Keeling Islands have really dropped off as well. But I do still think that this has a chance of producing gale force winds sometime in the next two days, especially tomorrow. It's likely to peak or get to its peak intensity sometime tomorrow. Uh, it will be at its strongest tomorrow, as I've just said. Uh, and in terms of it, the chances of it getting to tropical cyclone status, I think it is a pretty even split 50 50 right down the middle it could get there but depending on the bureau of meteorology's gale force classifications i don't think it's going to get there i just think the system will be too weak uh, and too little to properly get classified as a tropical cyclone here but it's very likely to achieve gale force winds sometime in the next 12 to 24 hours and in fact there's some observations from ascat which is a, a method of measuring the winds just by ocean waves uh, that are suggesting that this already has tropical cyclone force winds so again it's very close to that tropical cyclone status but I don't think it's going to get there. Still, though, a 50-50 split for our first named tropical cyclone of cyclone season 24-25 offshore from Western Australia. It is a chance over the coming couple of days. This video has gone for long enough, however. If you have enjoyed it, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd love to, love to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run this show without them. The list does keep growing as well. We're now up to about 20 members as well. So thank you so much for everyone's support. It is really great to see. Uh, and if you too want to get your name on this list then please do click the join button down below and select the channel sponsor it's great it gives you perks priority replies into the comments and also a custom badge as well but anyway so that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye